Well, hello there. Welcome here to another video. I've been asked by so many people how I get so much done. So I have two podcasts, uh, Dynamic Conversations, which is my personal podcast. I have the IPS podcast, which is the podcast of the IPS project, which is an educational platform on life. Uh, but then I also work full time self employed on the IPS project. Like I said, educational platform on life, where we provide education that you don't get in school, like on mental health, the mind relationships, the body and brain. So you know, I work full time on there, um, managing a team of members who work also on it. Uh, but I do a lot of the content creation on the platform. Uh, but then I also run this YouTube channel here. So my personal YouTube channel where I frequently upload new videos on. But then also on the YouTube channel of the IPS project where I also frequently put videos on. And then as well, on top of all that, I study part-time at the university, uh, I study psychology. And then I still manage to have time to go bouldering, to do, you know, my hobbies, to play guitar, to play piano, uh, to do LAN parties with my cousin, uh, and to see friends, you know, and to see my girlfriend and to go on trips. So I am able to manage a lot of things and consistently put out a lot of work and the way how uh, I actually thought about it and there's eight things that I took out that I really looked at that I was like yes these are the eight things that dramatically impact the quality and the quantity of work that I can deliver and I want to introduce this to you here in this video. Two notes before we go on. So the first note that I want to make clear is that not every technique might apply to you. However, I would suggest though that uh, because for some, you know, when they hear a technique, they might immediately go and like, oh, I don't like that. I will not try it. I would first suggest to try every technique out before deciding that it's going to work for you or not without even knowing it, right? So try it even if you've heard of this technique before. But if you've never really tried it, you cannot decide that it's actually going to work or not. In the end, of course, there might be something uh, in this list of eight things that I'm going to share that might actually not apply to your life and to your situation. And then the second note actually, and the last note is that I I'm not able to exactly customize uh, these techniques to your life just because I, I, I don't know who you are and I don't know your life situation, right? Some people watching might have a nine to five job. Some people watching might be just students. Some people might watching might be self-employed like me as well. Um, but th these techniques that I'm sharing uh, are applied to my circumstances and to my life, yet they are all customizable to any kind of situation, right? And when we're going through the list, uh, when I'm sharing each piece, uh, I will also insert some, some different ways to customize them. You also have to think a little bit for yourself, right? Because everyone is everyone's life circumstances are going to be different. So these are the two things that I just wanted to make clear. Let's now go over to the list of eight techniques to become crazy productive, to get a crazy amount of work done. This device, as incredible as it is, it is also one of the most distracting devices that we have almost all the time in reach. If you would actually put your phone off for one complete day, the amount of time that you will all of a sudden have is crazy. It will even feel like you have so much time that you don't know what to do with it. Now, this is actually not uh, the technique or what I'm going to suggest to you here to go all the way to that. But what I am suggesting is when you're actually working or studying, turn your phone on flight mode or to put your phone, you know, the vibration and the not notifications off and, and to put it on silence that it's not vibrating or, or making ringtones the whole time and to put it in another room. Uh, really important not to just have it you know, somewhere else here in the same room because then it's such a re reflex that we have that we see it and when something is going a bit more difficult on our work or when studying, 
we were like, oh, let me just check my phone and see if there's someone. And then, oh, there's a message. And Or you're just going on Facebook or on YouTube or on Instagram and you're off. And your level of quality of work will just dramatically decrease. Now, I know this is going to be one of those things that is going to be really, really, really difficult for a lot of people. And that on its own, saying that is so crazy, to be honest. Uh, therefore, if you could actually apply this to your work, to your studying, the level of quality, the level of quantity of work that you can get done on a day will then will double. It will just simply double because you're not constantly distracted from this device. So number two is a calendar system that I called the priority calendar system. I've got inspiration from someone who, who came up with this idea. I, 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 I don't know the person's name anymore. I found it somewhere on the internet. So there is credit to be given to someone that I don't know the name of anymore. So my apologies. Uh, but I have actually customized this system in certain ways. So the priority calendar system is uh, and you can use this system in many, many different ways. Now, let me show you actually a, a screenshot here of my calendar. And I know there's a lot of things going on on my calendar, but mainly try to just look at the green, the blue, the green, the blue, the green, the blue, the green. So what you can see is work, study, study, work, work, study, study, work, and so on. I use it to prioritize every day something different. So Monday, the green, I prioritize work over study. Tuesday, I prioritize study over work. So on Monday, I work minimally four hours. Uh, I can do more if I want to and if I need to. Uh, and I study on that day maximally two hours. Then Tuesday, it's the, it's the opposite. I study minimally four hours and work maximally two hours and so on. This system actually helped me uh, quite a lot to prioritize every day one thing over the other while the other thing is also still going up. Now, like I said, you can customize this in a lot of ways. Um, let me show you another way how I used this was actually to practice French and Spanish. So the way that I used it in that was actually a little bit different and I did it by week. So here you can see practice Spanish is uh, the blue, that's for one week. And then the next week, it's practice French uh, for one week. Then the next, it's again Spanish, French, and so on. And I did that for a whole year. That's another way of using the priority calendar system. And then the last way that I want to show, and this is actually the original way how uh, I, I, I discovered this. Uh, the other way is that's kind of like how I personally like customized it and made some adjustments to this system. But the original system is manager and maker. Here you can see manager, uh, flexible, maker, manager, flexible, flexible, maker. Manager is basically where all the office work has to be happened. So any paperwork or any meetings and calls and any, any, any bookkeeping or anything to do with the business, it's on that day. Uh, and then let me go first to maker. Maker is the creative day. So if you do any content creation or any writing or for example, filming a video like this, that will be on the maker day. That's the creative day to do creative work. Uh, now flexible is actually where you can decide. So if for example, uh, more, you have to be the manager a little bit more because there's um, more paperwork to do. You can be uh, that on the flexible day. You can be even both on that day. You can be the manager and the maker on that day. Flexible is to just have freedom to choose whatever you want to be. Um, now, this is how I used it. Uh, you, can, you can customize this. You can remove the flexible. You can do a few less of them all up to you to decide, right? There are so many ways to customize this to your life situation, your circumstances. These are just three examples that I've applied in my life. So that's the priority calendar system, super powerful. So the next thing that I have for you is have a to-do list. Now, this is probably something that you've heard a lot of times in a lot of other videos. 
uh, for good reason. Uh, but I want to add a few uh, maybe things that you haven't heard before. First of all, a to-do list should, and especially a to-do today list, is a list that you have to accomplish that day. The goal of a to-do today list is that you can actually do them all on that day. So the first thing is, and I've seen this actually with some people that they have literally almost hundreds of things on their to-do today list. Not good, because it's just demotivating. It's, yeah, it's really demotivating. Your to-do today list, and let me show you um, a screenshot of my to-do today list. It should be very manageable and very possible to do. Now, I would highly suggest to you to start, because you can see, and I've been doing this for years, the first thing on my to-do today list is a morning walk. You don't have to do per se a morning walk, you don't have to do that, but the, the suggestion is to, to start off with something super easy uh, that you can easily check off. And the reason for that is that you can get the ball rolling. That's the idea. Because once you have one thing checked off, it, it kind of feels good. You're like, all right, I'm, I'm starting to accomplish things today. And then you're more easier able to also check off the other things because you've got the ball rolling. And the best way to get it rolling is by starting the day off with something easy to check off. Now, what I would suggest with that is to have uh, something actually that benefits you in the day uh, to have that on your to-do today. It's like a morning walk, right? Because um, you've been sleeping, your body has been just laying still the whole time. Actually moving your body, getting your blood flow uh, running through your body, super healthy, also your mind starts waking up uh, and yeah, and just moving your body, lots, lots and lots of benefits to it. And it really helps me every morning, every day to uh, get, get started on the right note. Now you can do something else, right? You can start your day off with making a healthy smoothie, for example, or playing piano for uh, the first hour or something. Uh, just something to start your day off on a right note and to get you kind of in a good mood to start the day off and to get the ball rolling. Now what a to do today list actually does is that it sets objectives in your day and you have clear things to work towards to in your day and that just having that visually in front of you really helps because it sets kind of like micro uh, goals in your day who add up later on to bigger goals that you're working towards too, right? Uh, and this is just like a metaphor that I use a lot. It's just like climbing a mountain. Uh, the, the do today list is like the steps, every step that you're taking and the top of the mountain is the big goal that you have uh, laid out for you, but the steps count to get to there. And the to do today list is those steps. The first few hours in the day, put the things in your to do today list that require the most brain power and that are the most kind of exhausting to do and where you need your most attention on. Uh, if you put that actually later in the day, you will not be able to actually accomplish it with the same amount of quality when you would have had actually put it in the first uh, few hours of your day. And to give just an easy example, uh, like writing, for example, like writing an article for the IPS project or, or writing out notes for my study in psychology, they would, for example, take more brain power than editing this video. Cutting here, pasting things there together, that's really easy and doesn't require a lot of brain power. So the things that require your full attention and that require your brain to work a lot, put them first. And then the things that you can actually do while doing something else, like listening to a podcast, uh, that's something that you can do at the end of the day. Number five is something that you've likely heard before, the Pomodoro technique. Now, I know. You've heard this, right? <laughs> if not, I'll introduce you to it in a second, but most people know what it is. Yet, most people do not use this. And this could also be depending on your work, something that not that you might not be able to insert in your work. However, for a lot of people, this is something that you can apply. And yeah, I know a lot of people who know it, but never really have tried it actually, uh, or not consistently. So. In short, the Pomodoro technique is just where you set a timer for 35 minutes 
in those 35 minutes uh, and I just have uh, on, on my laptop just the timer that's in there so I have nothing special or anything uh, don't use your phone as a timer no use your laptop um, there's a built-in timer in there for sure uh, so I set a 35 minute timer uh, that's when I work or that's when I study and the first time that a timer goes off I take a 10 to 15 minute break uh, go to the toilet, take another coffee, another tea, eat something. And then I come back and I do another 35 minutes. Uh, but that after that, I actually take a 30 minutes break. And in that 30 minute break, I always go for a walk. Yeah, and then I just repeat it. Then after that, I take another 35 minutes, another 50 minute break and so on. And then after that, again. A 30 minute break use it like it's so powerful because it actually sets a deadline you know in those 35 minutes that there is an end point to work towards to and that after those 35 minutes is over you can actually relax and do something else and go and eat something if you don't have a timer it can seem like an endless amount of time before you actually can stop and do something else um, and take a break. This helps to set deadlines in those 35 minutes. The sole purpose, the sole thing that you have to do is just focus and work and you know at the end of the 35 minutes there's gonna be a reward. A reward of going to the bathroom, a reward of getting another coffee, a reward of going for a walk or doing whatever. And that really, really, really helps. So the next thing, and this kind of goes together with the Pomodoro technique, is to take breaks and to move yourself out of the environment where you are. When I'm working here and my Pomodoro went off, uh, the timer went off, I remove myself from this building here, uh, or from this room here at least. And there's a couple of reasons why it is really important to take breaks. Because when you're maybe stuck at a certain problem, it significantly can do the difference to just remove yourself from that environment to another one and then to come back. And many times you can actually better tackle the problem. And to that, when you take breaks, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to move your body, uh, to do some yoga, to do some pull-ups. Uh, to go for a walk. Whenever I take a break, I always go for a walk. And it's kind of like a, uh, a speed walk. Like, it's not like I'm running, but I'm, I'm walking on a steady pace. And it's not, it doesn't need to be an hour. It, it's just like 50 minutes that I go on a very, like on a power walk. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's really healthy to move your body. Uh, there's too many benefits to it. Uh, Short-term benefits and long-term benefits that can significantly improve the quality of your work and your focus. Because uh, once you've moved your body, a lot of times your focus is so much stronger again. We, we sit so much on a chair. Uh, most people watching this, their job is probably also to sit on a chair or if you study, yeah, you also sit on a chair. It's ridiculous how much we have to sit or how much we sit in general. So to have more movement throughout your day can dramatically do the difference between being productive or not between getting a lot of work done or not because moving your body sharpens your mind sharpens your focus it increases your energy again when you come back when you sit down uh, again because your body has moved try it i mean if you try to actually do this when you're taking a break to go for a short walk you will feel the change of difference in focus and the quality that you can deliver if you have moved your body Number seven is to make it easy for yourself. So here is what I mean with that. When I stand up, what I always do is, uh, if it's, for example, uh, the main priority of that day is to study, I put on my laptop, I lay my book on the page uh, that I need to study or that I have to continue on. I open Notion uh, where I can take notes, I start the coffee machine and then I go and take a shower and then I'm off on a morning walk. When I come back, the coffee is ready, uh, I can take my coffee and everything is ready to go. I've made it super easy for myself by getting everything ready 
uh, in the beginning and I can just sit down and immediately start. So whenever I start the day off, I do this or when I am moving on to some other task, right? When I, for example, work on a podcast episode and I'm done studying, I put all my books away, I open Notion again to the podcast episode or I open Audition uh, to edit on the podcast episode and then I go and take a break. And once the break is over, I come back and it's like, oh, everything is already ready to go. I just took a break. My mind is clear. I'm completely focused and sharp and ready to go. Uh, and I don't waste any time on that moment, uh, having that clarity to get everything ready. I can immediately go. If you can already do that before, you know, starting the day or before uh, you work on the next task or do the next thing, it would just really feel like you did a nice thing to yourself and it really feels like you can immediately after your break or immediately once you went on your morning walk or whatever you put as the first thing in your to-do today list that you can immediately get you know get work done that you can immediately get some studying done it's a nice feeling and you can apply this actually for a lot of other things too so some years ago when i used to go running um, sometimes there were days that I didn't feel too much in a mood, but that I, yeah, set myself to go running. The hour before I put on my to-do today list uh, to go running, say uh, on 7 p.m., that I uh, wanted to go running on 8 p.m., uh, but then on 7 p.m. I still had some work to do, I would put everything ready. I would put on my jogging pants, I would put my shoes in front of the door, I would put everything ready um to go running uh put the shower ready also so i can immediately once i'm back uh, get a shower and then on 7 p.m i would still work with my jogging pants on and once the pomodora the timer went off and it's time actually to go running to do that thing then i'm already like okay i mean you know everything is already there like i have my jogging pants on the shoes are just over there it just helps to get over that, you know, sometimes you just need a little bit push of a motivation and this can greatly help you because you're like, okay, well, everything is there. I'm, I'm ready to go. And yeah, each time this has actually helped me to go and then do go for a run when I was feeling some days a little bit less in the mood. Try it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's actually something that really increased my amount of work that I can do and my productivity. So yeah. You can try everything out uh, in this list that I shared here and they're gonna work really well in a lot of ways. But if this one, if you do not love what you do is missing, then it's only gonna work for the short term to use these techniques that I shared. It's not gonna play out well for the long term because you're gonna burn out. The work that I do, because I love it, it gives me energy. It allows me, because of that, because it gives me energy to keep doing this and to keep doing so many different things. If I didn't like any of those things that I do to the degree that I like it, uh, yeah, I would, I would break down. I would immediately burn out, I would say. But because I love it, it actually, instead of uh, takes energy from me, it actually gives energy to me. And that's the real secret, actually, and the ingredient uh, of, of getting a lot of work done is to, to love it, to love the work that you're doing. And then the other things that I shared, all that together, uh, yeah, allows me to get a crazy amount of work done and it can definitely allow you to do the same. I hope with that that you got something new out of this video and that you're also gonna try uh, Well, I hope everything out. One last thing that I want to drop and this is definitely not for everyone But we also have on the IPS Academy. So the Academy from the IPS project um, a course on productivity and time management now this is not for everyone but for those the nerds over there who are really looking to get really nerdy into productivity, uh, that course is 1000% for you. 
Uh, there is thousands of students on it, hundreds of reviews that you can check out, there's some preview lessons that you can try, and, and there's a 30 day guarantee money back. So if you don't like it, you can always ask your money back. I'm just throwing this out there. Again, this is not gonna be for everyone. You can check it in the description uh, down below. So I will put a link there that you can uh, that you can check the course out. But again, this is just a suggestion. The things that I already shared here will already definitely increase the productivity and the amount of work that you can do. But if you if you want to go even more nerdy and check that course out because it's definitely going there. <laughs> With that, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video here and that you got something out of it. Um, let me know in the comments down below and I hope I can welcome you and see you again soon on another video. Don't forget if you, by the way, liked this video to put a thumbs up and uh, yeah, subscribe for other videos, other awesome videos to come very soon. Ciao!